striking. And we're back with a special uh, uh, special new segment on Loosely Related Podcasts. We're joined, as always, by Brian, the producer, although he might be silent right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, Joe and Joey. What's up, guys? And we have a special guest uh, today that we've been really wanting to talk to for a while. It's a very interesting uh, uh, job or role that he had for 20 years. Uh, so we're going to be talking with a man named Ray today. And Ray served as a correction officer for uh, 20 years at Rikers Island. So what's up, Ray? How are you doing today? What's up, Ray? Hey, Ray. Welcome doing? to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's great to have our first guest. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, you're the first and hopefully a long line of people we'll have on our, our show with some great stories about their experiences and their jobs and whatever else, but I think it's going to be really cool, you know. It's yeah, I think fun. it's great. Yeah. Yeah, really know, happy uh, to have you on, Ray. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you again so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today. We really were jazz, and we've been talking about this for a while. Yeah. Uh, particularly, this is interesting because uh, Ray's a guy who worked there for 20 years, but not just worked at Rikers Island, worked during a period of time during the 80s, 90s, and into 2000s where some of the biggest headlines were grabbed from Rikers Island uh, with violence epidemics, uh, brutal treatment, incarcerated, uh, group violence. So we'd like to get done to that, all, all into that, but we're going to unpack steadily. Why don't you go ahead, uh, Ray, and just explain to us, how did you end up being a corrections officer? How did you get into that? Uh, I grew up in New York City. Uh, as I got older, the job opportunities weren't really there. So I wasn't the best behaved as a young man. So it <laughs> okay. was none of us were. I don't do, think any of us were. Do, yeah. so, do something. And, you know, you take city tests because all like a lot of my friends were plumbers and, all, you know, uh, book job people and okay. you had to know somebody to get into that and oh, I didn't wow. know anybody so I took tests and I happened to take that one and go on to that I took pol police I took fire department mm -hmm. the fire department and I was service. the next class to get called and they had a lawsuit and they killed the whole list so wow. that was how wow. the police department I went through everything and something happened <laughs> during <laughs> the interview and that squashed that okay and then in corrections at that time of, of uh, the period of time, they were looking for anybody. They didn't have people working there. It was not a preferable job, so they would take anybody there. If you didn't have if you didn't have a felony record, you you were good. Okay. You were good. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty great. They were really open on who they were. Yeah, talking. Okay. exactly. I should have applied well, uh, at Rikers, man. maybe. Yeah. Uh, so, what year are you talking about? What year is this that you started? Eighty-four. Start there? So you started nineteen eighty-four okay. in Rikers. What did you know about it going? Did you know anything about it, or had you well, heard about you it? You grew up. You grew up in New York City. You know, Rikers Island has like a stigma to it. Sure, oh, like sure. A scary place. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it gives me yeah, chills. Yeah, no, that's pretty crazy. So well, I find it interesting. So we always say Rikers Island. It legitimately is an island. It mm -hmm. says 413-acre island, the East River between Queens and the Bronx. Right. Um, but what I, I didn't know about this, and I only heard from you, what I find interesting is it, it is a self-contained island environment, right? Explain exactly. a little bit about how, what does it look like to be on there? What is it like? Uh, hmm. You have to go through a big process to get over. You have to, you know, they have it's a bridge that goes over. In a long time ago, it used to be a ferry that stopped they put a long bridge wow you stop at the one checkpoint you have you know your thing in the car to show you can come on you stop at one checkpoint show your id get mm -hmm. to the other side stop at another checkpoint show your id go into the main <clears throat> building show your id okay. get on huh. a bus to take you to the institution that you worked at wow, wow. So, and then show the persons at the front gate okay. your institution your id, your ID. <laughs> so what uh, what it really reminds me of and maybe they based on this is one telling me a little bit about this because i heard a little bit about before what the makeup was of the uh the institution or or the um the site it reminds me like uh that batman that arkham's island yeah no, oh, it does. yeah, yeah kind of does sure, it kind of right? gives yeah. me that thought i don't know if you've yeah. ever seen that in games yeah. or you know the whole island yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so what what is on is there like transportation on there do you just drive a car around do you uh take some people get special passes where they could drive right through Okay. How to big the, is the, to the jail they were. It's, it's huge. It's pretty, yeah, it's is a, it? It's yeah. a 413 plus acres. Is it? Wow. Yeah. Uh, most big. people, you'd have to park your car in a giant lot after you go through that, the multiple checkpoints and go okay. through, and then, then go to another place, get checked. Then get so on just to get in, you're talking about like what, 20, 30, just 15, to get in 15, 20 there? minutes. You got to leave have to add early on time. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Wow. You got oh, to make ass. sure you're... you're, yeah. you're Planning on that when you're leaving for work, I suppose. Yeah. No, I I think I've probably driven past Rikers Island a hundred times in my yeah, lifetime. Yeah, I, right? I, I I couldn't tell you where it is. I know it's 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 off of Bro it's off of Brooklyn. If or? you no, it's, it's at the, the bridge is on the Queen side. If you come, side. if you go past LaGuardia Airport, you'll see. Uh, 
they don't really have a sign for it on the road. You would have to really, come visit no, us. Yeah, right. It's down, Vacancies. you have to go down into East Elmhurst, and you cross okay. a bridge. Okay, all right. Gotcha. So you start there in 1984, looking for like what it sounds like civil service jobs. Civil you kind of get screwed yeah. out of the um uh, the fire. Uh, yeah, I got the fire uh, department, right? Yeah. It always seems to happen, right? It's like Murphy's Law. It's yeah. something. Yeah, yeah right. Foot drops. Yeah. So, all right. So what What was it like? What was your initiation there? What, what was your initial feeling? Like, you're here, you got a job, you put your uniform on. What What now? Uh, you know, you go through the academy. Most of the people that train you in the academy, they're like ex military. They're correction oh, wow. officers, but they're, most of them ex military. Okay. So they put you through. How long is the academy? Uh, I think it was then. It was eight months. Now oh, it's wow. a, now it's a year. Oh, a whole year of academy. Yeah, now oh, it's that's a year. Big time. I, yeah. I believe. Wow. I mean, considering like for the Navy, it's only ten right. weeks, to, ten twelve weeks, right. depending on what they're and, cycling. And it was basically probably just like you were in the military, like a yeah. military type of uh, training. That similar environment. And then they would stop bringing you out. Like the only thing different now is that they brought you right to the jail right away when we were in the academy. Okay. And they, they would. Yeah. And yeah, they put you on in the post. You know, they put you. <laughs> Right in there, like two weeks. There's on, no way you're in a jail. And wow. There you go. Work, right. Yeah. You know <laughs> yeah. Trial by so, fire. So I mean, when yeah. you first go in there, do they have to somebody? Or are you like on the job training? Are you walking with somebody who's like trying to give you the ropes there? Some people, you know, it's like probably on your job. You some people will try to mentor you, and some people don't give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Right, of course. Okay. Yep. My biggest question here is: Were you nervous? I, I you know, I thought about being yeah. a, a corrections officer from t- when I was younger, and I, I actually applied for the police department. Actually, a couple of interviews. Mm-hmm. And I thought about the corrections, but it made me too nervous to actually apply there. Were you nervous, like nah, getting that really. job and having I mean, to deal with? I mean, I was, like I said, I was a little loosey goosey as a young man. Anyway, I think it fit my personality. You're yeah. always gonna be, you know what? You're always gonna be a little f- afraid. If you're not, you're gonna get hurt. You have right. To, right? Sure. Yeah, have some that, natural yeah, fear, yeah. right? Yes. But you have to be a certain type of person. Too, yeah, you have to have a certain these guys type that take of advantage of you. Sure. They'll know right away. Almost like when you're riding a horse, kind of. They know if you're a experienced right. horse rider or not. You know, you work there. Fuck. You start. You, you start. If within six months you're gonna know if you're gonna be if able to stay here or not. Okay. Mm-hmm. Most people. Most Probably people, take me six minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. really, no. Yeah. Some, I, some people well, yeah. did take six I'm minutes. Sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, go with, I think oh, I went to the, my institution with like twenty people when we finally graduated, and like three of them quit right that day. Wow. As soon as we started. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, oh so goodness. what I'm really what I'm really interested, I'm sure a lot of us are. <laughs> we've heard so much about the '80s and the '90s crack epidemics, New York City, and all, uh, all kinds of just raging violence, and and I think even to the fact or the point it would overflow from the not just even Rikers, I mean just the atmosphere in general. What was a normal day like for you on Rikers Island in that late '80s, early '90s? What was it like, and what were you doing? What was your job at that point? Uh, like I said, my first seven years I was you know rotating shifts so you worked everywhere and most some jobs were where you really didn't do too much at all and then other jobs where you're in a mix all the time okay. and like the 80s and into the beginning of the 90s it was violence and mm-hmm. constantly did really? you have that expectation coming on to the like you're coming on that yes night? because when you came on the first thing uh, one of the officers said to us, "I hope you can fight." When he, we came, no here. kidding. Yeah, wow. That's what they said. Yeah. Wow. wow. Oh my gosh. gosh. What were? Tell us a little bit about like what were the numbers? How many uh, inmates as compared to how many of you guys? Uh, in the eighties into early nineties, it was we were so understaffed. Like okay. you would have a, you would be the only officer in the housing area and have a hundred inmates in the housing area. Okay. And, you, and you're the only wow. officer. Only in officer, there. yeah. Well, and are are so oh, they, yeah. do they have a lot of mobility? Is it are they tightly shot? What is it like? They they didn't let now people think they're running loose. Like yeah, it wasn't no, okay. Like okay. Okay. okay, but they would have to come out because some of them had work details. Some of them to come out for court to go to to medical to so there is a lot of movement. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of movement, right? Yes. Because you have you, you're they're not staying there for more than a year, right? My right. institution, we had everything in there. Okay. But if they got sentenced to a uh, county time, they would do it in my institution. No, but when I first started, we had every type of inmate. We had adult sentenced, adult uh, adolescent sentenced, adolescent detainees, adolescent. Uh, we even had females come there I was for just school. Oh, school. really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, I didn't oh know my that. goodness. Wow. But they didn't live in that thing. They would come. We had John Jay College was in there, and they, females would come over for no, school. Really? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. When yeah. you say inst- cool. your institution, what do you mean exactly? There's like eight. When I started, there wasn't 
eight, but I think there's about eight jails there now. But it was like six or seven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Different wow. different types of institutions. Some okay. were higher class. Right. Most, like most of the jails were waiting or... trial okay. uh, jail uh, or got they had jails where they primarily housed guys waiting who violated their parole waiting to go back upstate. Oh, they wow. had an adolescent, what you call a detention center, the female detention center, uh, uh, infirmary. Right. Uh, uh, mental health unit. Oh, they so that, have mental what health. Was, okay. Yeah, I remember you telling me about this. What was the mental health unit like? What was the bill? Was it like I was just gonna ask that. we had we or? had one, the one main mental health unit was housed like nine hundred to a thousand mental health patients. Thousand, wow, really? Yeah, yeah, and they were and was full all the time. Yeah. Wow. And then we had like the Bellevue uh, the hospital outpost. Yeah, and they had that mental health unit there, and the Kings County had the D building, which was a mental health unit. Wow. So they had that primary and then overflows that was and, and every jail had a, a mental health housing area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh my gosh. In a, in addition to that it, one to primary, the, right? So uh -huh. if that wasn't a primary issue, but they had issues, right. they it's might a, be you know it. depends on the degree of their mental right. illness where they were. <laughs> wow. well, I bet the COs that had some mental. Yeah. Illnesses. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Crazy. <laughs> so what? Give us some. Uh, give us some highlights that you had during those times. Like what kind of things? I know you've told me, and mm -hmm. and when you first told me, I was like utterly amazed. But then yeah. after reading a little bit in preparation to see you today. It seems like this was like these type of breakout the violent norm. fights were just Almost. normal. Yeah. It was normal. Like yeah. I said, you know, you would be there. You'd be there. You go in and you'd be, you're going to be there for 16 hours, if not longer, every time. And in the 80s and 90s, you fought three, three to six times a day. And not little fights. I mean, all out, like, street mm. fights. Wow. So how did how did they like did what do you think in, in your humble opinion this is just one person's opinion but what do you think led to a lot of these like was it the understaffing was it the tools you had was it the understaffing clients? and in the eighties and nineties it was so much people incarcerated it, you know you put that many people on top of each other yeah it's going to be problems you're going to have, you're gonna have mm -hmm. it's just overcrowding problems. right yeah yeah yeah, yeah sure. overcrowding was a, is an understatement right. Okay. So that led to a lot of spill. Yeah. I, I would imagine if you have those situations, there's probably times where people are maybe as confined as they necessarily should be. Right. Because you have to choose one I, over another, right? I, I, you know, they were locking up everybody, like especially when Giuliani took office in the 90s. Right. Uh, he wanted to clean up Newark, and he did a good job, but they were locking up, putting people in jail for, like, tickets, like traffic tickets. Really? Just yeah. excessive. Really? Oh, right. man. Oh, and they yeah, were at I Rikers? Remember. Yeah, at Rikers. Uh -huh. Wow. Makes so you'd have those That's people around. with some like psychotic person probably in close proximity, right. I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. They tried to, you know, they had, uh, in the 80s, they had so much violence that they, the, the, the fed, federal government indicted the whole institution. Oh, right. I can, oh, and, yeah, yeah. So tell us about, how does that happen? How does the institution because get? Because the institution was the most violent institution in the United States of America, mm -hmm. maybe even the world. Wow. I mean, it was yeah, officer- on inmate, inmate on inmate, inmate on officer, off staff on staff. Everybody was hurting each other. Right. Right. Staff on staff. Staff yeah. on staff. Staff on staff. Like quite fighting off, quite, each other. Qu yeah, quite quite often. Okay, wow. so wow, really? tell us what, what was the process and in, in, on these uh, d dark days that you're kind of describing. What would be a process of like you're moving someone? A fight breaks out. Does an alarm go off? Do, are you grouped together? How does uh, this work? I'm gonna tell, like when you first started, I'm going to tell you. Uh, there was a lot of people in my institution had a lot of old people that had a lot of time there. They probably were there since the 70s, like okay, late wow. 70s. And then people wouldn't talk to you until you they saw you get involved in some kind of altercation. altercation. Wow. Uh, you, uh, couldn't uh, at, you couldn't sit at the you couldn't sit at the table at, kind of at, like... at the mess hall. And once they saw you, you know, you were gonna fight and you weren't gonna snitch, they would then You're then right you're in right. there. Yeah. So, wow. it was a, so it was a little hazing or initiation right. type. Yeah, they so, used, you're talking about alarms. You know, they, a buzzer. No matter where you, a buzzer will go off. You go put on gear and kind of go gear. fight. But when we first started, we, we didn't really have anything. Was we had like these little green things that you put on. <laughs> wow. Most of the time, we That's didn't crazy. even we didn't even wear them, ladies. We just ran down. You there just because you had to get is, there. Yeah. What do you got time to right. walk around? Right, just oh went down. Gosh. But then they, you know, after we got inside, there was a whole bunch of rules changed, probably for the better. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. had, they had to have certain equipment. You couldn't. They couldn't have us running down here with uh, just our uniforms. So, on. what do you feel like they had an expectation that you were supposed to find some other way out of these altercations? Like, what what did it boil down to? Were they feeling like you were going you know, like seals were going excessive on people? I mean, what was the deal? Uh, that's basically that. You know, it was like excess excessive use of force. That's okay. what, that okay. was a, that was a, a a word used 
okay. constantly. Right. Mm. Okay. And okay. They, every every half a year, there was rewriting policy about you so know, there was the amount of, of force used to right. stop the situation. Did you ever have any personal altercations that you, you like were bad personal alter in your own? You know, your you own yeah. hurt. Yo, oh, yeah. oh yeah. 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 I, yeah. Got, my, I got my head cracked open with wow. a oh my mop ring. Mop, mop I got wire. stabbed a... once and I got cut with a razor another time. Dangerous wow, job. Got thrown down the stairs, but that was, they were trying to uh, restrain this guy up on a, a upper level and he was huge and he was knocking the seals all over the place and the other guys rushing up to help knocked me down the stairs and oh, wow. Oh, wow, like wow. damaged my discs. In my... When, I, when any of these incidents happen, you ever think, hey man, it's just not worth it? Like, you, well, you got a family or... Yeah, that time or no? My I didn't meet my wife till like my last five six years of the job. So okay, okay. I wasn't really. It was go to work, and then your days off. Go out with the people you work with or your yeah. friends from the street, and and, and you know That's good. live it up. That okay. last five or six years was that like a little bit more of like a coming I mean, compared to your well, my last like ten uh thir- t- last ten years I I they removed me from working with the population because I oh, was getting okay. into too much <laughs> altercations. I just, oh, wow. I'm just snickering to myself just because I have an idea having been around Ray for a little bit. I have some concept of what kind of things that you might get and into. And they put me like I did intake <laughs> and I process people in and out of the system and I worked with all the other law enforcement agencies oh, okay. depending on right. d- determining if this guy can go to the street, this guy's going here, this guy's going there, can this guy come in here? Right. So I did that. And it was, you know, a lot less but you still the only thing about that is you were the primary uh response team if something happened and alarm went off you were the first ones mm-hmm. down there really so oh, in, wow. in during these indictments how many times all said and told would you say you had to show up for yourself appear in court mm. i really don't recollect but a lot a lot, wow. right? It was more than once or twice. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think it was underneath the uh, World Trade Center, if okay. I remember correctly. Oh, wow. It was a giant giant room as big as like two football fields. And it was weird because they would have, you'd see all other people with agents and stuff, it, like people you work with, talking with them, and I was talking over there. I think they were kind of using like a kind of uh, paranoia thing with everybody. Right. Oh, oh okay. what's he saying? What's yeah. he saying over yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, no, that's yeah. actually what. To yeah, get people, other yeah. people to yeah. speak. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, sounds like it's not just a job. It sounds like it, it was an adventure. You know yeah, it really does. It's yeah, like yeah, it's a lifestyle or something yeah. going on. You were there. laughing or crying. That's what you always oh say. You were laughing. Yeah. So is, would you, is it, it, I don't want to exaggerate or put words in anyone's mouth. Would you say, in your own words, mm-hmm. during the worst times, obviously, mm-hmm. the 80s was, was the it? Worst. So the 80s, those mid to late 80s, would you mm-hmm. say it was like rare to leave and not have gotten to a fight on a given day? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wow. So that wasn't even... It nah. would, oh, it was my just gosh. Part just, of, so you just had prepared day. yourself to knowing that this was Right. Gonna if you weren't... If you didn't get in a fight, you were responding with the team, probe team, and okay. stopping something. Was there any areas that were worse than others? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So what were the areas that, like, nobody wanted to work? Uh, We had, like, a punitive segregation unit, which means that that's like a jail within the jail because you don't behave in the jail, so you get put in a different uh, jail in a jail. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. They have, like, solitary in there or no? Or? No, they, but they, they were, they had, they don't, which they don't do no more. They had them, um, you were 23 hours in. The cell. Oh, wow. Only one hour out one for hour. recreation. Okay, so. Wow. And they didn't go to a regular uh, recreation. They went to a special yard. Okay. okay. And that was, that was with like other as people. big as this room here. Was, wow. was, was that by themselves or with other people in the same situation? Or No, they, they let them. Isolation. Huh? They let them out together from the oh. Oh, segregation. Okay. Unless, you know, there was problems between different factions that yeah. were locked up. And then they wouldn't. They All would, right. So sometimes actually, they would move them somewhere else. I'm yeah. uh, glad you said that, the, the faction thing. So, you know, I don't want to speak for everybody. But for me, you know, I just see what I've seen on these popular television shows mm-hmm. like Oz from HBO back yeah. in the day. The Wire. The Wire. Tell us how much of you do you feel like that was a reality at, at Rikers? Mm, it's, exaggerated. Most, it's exaggerated. Most okay. stuff yeah. is exaggerated on okay. TV. Even like uh, stuff that's pretty close. Like sometimes they'll show stuff in uh, Law and Order where they're going. And mm, it's yeah. sort of. Yeah, so some truth but then really just embellishing yeah, it yeah. yeah how about what as far as like gangs and stuff that's a reality that's what i was, I was, always gonna gang. ask, gangs yeah. always in criminal yeah is always gonna be there right that was that element. like would you say that the vast majority of the violence was gang related or would you know, like, like uh at certain periods of time yeah yeah in the 
in the nineties you start we started having like uh the Latin kings and yet as well all Latin gangs which were really huge. Okay. Oh wow. And yeah, I remember we that. We started having problems. Then no, you got crazy. then in uh, two thousand the El Salvadorians had gangs, you had the Bloods and the Crips. Mm. Right. Oh you had all that man. Yeah. Uh -huh. They must pass there. I mean they, they were real you know, areas, they right? they yeah, right? they were they were just as bad as but they weren't like real bloods and crips like LA bloods. Right, yeah, that's what they're but they call them offshoots. Yeah. 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 Oh, offshoot blood. Right. I'm yeah. Well it became a, it became a state by state thing. Like it was yeah. like a club. You you went you know, they had the bloods and, and the crips yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they had factions and all Yeah, whatever. all over the country. So uh, uh has anyone ever seen uh, this is a common like show trope and I, I could see how it could be reality so somebody would go into jail wouldn't necessarily be like an everyday person can really protect themselves and then somebody will offer protection if they do something for them how oh, about that kind of yeah thing? That, that 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 happens there's that, always yeah. you know, there's always pay for you know for, for i'm gonna do something for you okay right. uh, absolutely oh. okay so the then, only thing myth i want to exclude right now which yeah. they always over dramatize movies and it does happen but it doesn't happen like getting sexually assaulted. I was, okay, yeah. that was the next, okay. my next question. Yeah. Ninety nine percent of the sexual contact between inmates is consensual. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. There's only one, like you know, one percent something. And there's things that have happened. So like sure. the okay. the. the, the the scene that everybody knows from like Shawshank, that right. kind of thing doesn't right. happen. No, often. it hap it doesn't happen as often. often. As they it, do it, it does happen, but it's not like people think as soon as you go in there, they're going to worry they're about gonna it. They're going to push you down on the they're floor. They're going to throw the soap on right. the floor. Right, yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. Wow, right. okay, that's well, pretty crazy. What were your concerns? Did you guys have training? You said earlier that you had been like cut and, right, What can you say that again? What what happened to you, Ray, what, with what, violence? The time I got so cut injuries. was during a riot okay. at the feeding with the adolescents. The kids were fighting with the state parole violators and the one I know it was one kid that didn't like me and uh, just the arm came out of the crowd while we were fighting and cut my arm open wow. okay. so the thing is so it's not just the initial right reality that you've just been harmed but yeah, right. you're a healthcare professional now right so you know this as well as anyone else but during the 80s 90s weren't you concerned with like bloodborne pathogens HIV uh -huh. hepatitis you know what I didn't get it and uh -huh. I was covered in people's blood Quite yeah. often. That's what I was going to ask. Do they treat you? Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, back then it probably wasn't no. as widely known. You didn't think about it. Because that's got to be going rampant, well, right? Well, HIV was HIV was big. Yeah. big. But if you were, yeah. even if you were halfway intelligent, you know, if you had some ha intelligence, you knew that you weren't catching it like that. Right. Okay. Like HIV. You right. Know, you can cover it. Like I said, you're not. Because there was times mm -hmm. when we we're covered in blood, and, and oh the guy God. was telling him, "I'm HIV yeah. positive. He's Hep C positive." Oh, they would tell that. Yeah, they would. They would tell you. Oh wow. Mm. Wow. What about like people throwing like uh, I know Feces. obviously yeah. That's what I've I, that's that what I've heard. Happens. I've heard that as well. Of course we want to know. I'm they sure had a big problem too. with it in the eighties, nineties, and then the gov the state made it a, a felony to do it. Oh wow! And they were they were locked arresting people because we mm. you know we progressed too. We they, they had a gang intelligence unit and a arrest unit on Rikers Island, and they okay. would arrest them. But that used to be common. That's that's interesting. So wait, explain that to us real quick, because that that is interesting, Joe. Yeah. Uh, what is so? Right, you're saying that they would have like like police units, kind of like yeah, on they would there. have the officers trained as arrest, you know, arresting okay. procedures to arrest arrest so, the uh, gang member for gang wow. stuff and okay. for assaults on island. Okay, that's unbelievable. Because they used to not nothing would happen. They would just yeah. you know assault. They get beat down. You get injured, and they would that would be the end of it. There was nothing else happened. Didn't de wow. deter anything. Okay. It's unbelievable. I um just to go back to the the, the feces throwing part of it. Uh, I actually I, I <laughs> had a friend in the army who actually served. Uh, he spent some time and uh, at uh, Guantanamo Bay down yeah. there. He was stationed down there, and he was a uh, an officer, a corrections officer. Uh, he was uh, on patrol, and he said one of the things the prisoners would always do down there. You know, a lot of them are not obviously. Throw piss and you know, shit. yeah, they throw piss and shit all the time. He said yeah. he would he would have to come. He would said he would go in. He would have to change his uniform multiple times during the same shift. He was just covered in wow. piss. That's and crazy. in certain areas because like, we had like uh, in the nineties they built up. Uh, central punitive segregation unit which was a whole jail for people who couldn't behave in jail and they were locked down you know mm -hmm. and they would just wear like uh, those big heavy rain the officers would just wear big wow. heavy rain stuff oh my wow. god so until they started locking them up that big of a, yeah okay. it was a big issue yeah. wow, okay. that's insane that is insane so speaking of like rain because we had a, a, a lady talk about worst jobs ever seriously yeah. we should have <laughs> entered that in worst jobs yeah. ever yeah um, so Ray and I had a 
coworker uh, that she went back to doing uh, healthcare providing in the in the um, prison system. Right. And she said, uh, you know, she was telling. I don't see why she would lie, but she would like they would masturbate a lot and try to throw like the jacket. Oh, there. that too. Oh, yeah, they would masturbate oh, in front of the female uh, offices. So wow. you had female officers with you too. Yeah. I never even considered that. What was, oh, what I was didn't that even like think for of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was probably tough, tougher for them than it was for the males. Did they have yeah. to perform? Were they, they had to do the same thing? We, yeah. They had to do the same thing. Yeah. With that. You know, it's like any other job, though. Some people were favored and yeah, sure. they would yep. take them yep. and put them in imagine. office jobs. But that's, you know, that's, any, that's, any, that's anywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. literally. So, wow. But some of the females were tougher than the men. I, I believe sure. it. Yeah. Can be. yeah. Not you out in a <laughs> oh second. Yeah. Yeah. What was, uh, can, can you give us a quick idea about what's the hierarchy in a, a place like Rikers Island? Like uh, officer, uh, you know, how does the hierarchy oh, work there? You know, officer is the lowest, then you have captain, then you have okay. the assistant okay, deputy yeah. warden, deputy warden, warden, and then everything else is like commissioner and assistant commissioners and all that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's for the whole each, city, each, basically. Yeah. Right. Each, each institution had like a programs. Uh, deputy warden, uh, security deputy warden, and uh, administrative deputy warden, and, 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 rec- okay. and a warden. That's oh. pretty crazy. Well, I'm sure you've known at least some of them. We were chatting with you, weren't they, Rick? Yeah. yeah. They were chatting, chatting you about your job, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us mm-hmm. a, a story that I, I really, I don't know, I, I hate to say I enjoy Remind it, me I did enjoy it. it. <laughs> you told me a story a while ago about what it was like when uh, you do the scare straight and they would tell the kids not to wear their stuff. And oh, oh, yeah. You did that? You did the scare straight Yeah, stuff? we did oh, scare wow. straight. And we were would, tell, we would tell them, you know, take your jewelry off, take those sneak, we'll give you the state sneakers they got to wear and take those off and leave them with us. <laughs> some of them would and some of them, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. And we come back out with nothing. They so the inmates no would jack them. Take them. Mm. Mm. Would you have to get it back for them or what would you do? Yeah, a lot, most of the time they get it back. Because you know what they had, like, they would bring them in and they'd put them right in the holding pen with all the people coming in, which was the worst because they just... They've been in uh, Central Booking for three yeah, days, so and, years and, they, and they've been in jail before, and they just that's not a good place. And they had like mm. inmates that they, they had like they pay them regular like a like a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they would make sure that they don't really hurt them. Yeah, wow. and they would get really? they would most go of the time they them now, most or? of the time they would get their stuff back. But if it was a piece of jewelry like a a, 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 a earring, diamond earring, you ain't you get, getting that. Yeah, right, right, right. You right. have to be realistic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You ever see any of these kids who were on that scared straight come, yeah, come be, back anyway? I was yeah. gonna say uh-huh. they get arrested yeah. and be yeah. back there for they real. Come. Yeah, I was gonna. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure that's happened. Did you find a lot of success with that program, or was it? Um, no, I think it worked for oh, you. Think it's effective for the most yeah, part. Great. So, yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, all right. Especially that's if it's you know your you first a couple second time you're doing something stupid. Yeah, that was scare you. Good. Yeah, well, Good. it would scare somebody with in their right mind. Right. Of course, yeah. we know. I'm sure a lot of people there didn't have any kind of right mindset. Yeah. So, uh, so Rikers itself obviously has, I would say, it's its own mysteries or its own like mm-hmm. identity kind mm-hmm. of like it yeah. definitely stirs me to me when i hear about it. You, call it you know like you yeah. hear it gives you a, a yeah, thought a lot of well, stigma still yeah absolutely yeah. can you tell us about someone maybe the famous or more infamous people that yeah, have been held there ask that myself oh that... the one person i wanted to ask about in particular was david berkowitz were you there when david well, berkowitz was he was in short through shortly and he was not in my institution he was in that uh he was in one of the hospital uh, mental Psych health units. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. I'd imagine. Yeah, there's been a number of people. I read like even like sports figures. I don't like writing names, but there was a lot of sports figures, okay. a, lot of mu- a lot of musicians, yeah. a lot of uh, okay. po- political people, real big political. What kind people. of what kind yeah, of things yeah. would you see them in for? You don't have to say names, right? But what kind of things would bring them into a place like that? Uh, the sports and we had plex, sports plex, and well, uh, and, uh, and uh, musicians. It was usually drug related. Okay. Mm. Like what, more white collar crimes or whatever uh, the ones crimes. that was I was was white collar, you know, like the politicians. And will they separate them out, or will they be? Yes, we the put them in. They kind of have to. We right? put them. They call that administrative seg. They weren't where they had to stay locked in their cell for twenty three hours, but they were still separated from anybody. We had protective custody, oh and administrative God. seg. Mm. Okay. Do you ever feel like personally, like? Oh, well, let me just ask you outright. I guess what is your personal feeling that you, as a CO, you and your colleagues putting your your health at risk and, and like you have to do that for some schmuck who's just going to be in some executive like sweet area. Yeah, right. Do right. you have a problem with that? No, you know what? I have really had no control. So I really don't care. Well, I you don't pay attention. Okay. Yeah. That's, That's a good, a good mindset problem. On yeah. a personal yeah. level, you might, but not on a professional level, I yeah. guess. Right. Yeah. 
So uh, um, out, of your, out of your 20 years, I just wanted to ask a few questions and we'll, we'll wrap. Yeah. Uh, out of the 20 years you spent there, is there a highlight and a low light for you there? The highlight was, like I said, the last 10 years when I, my job, I learned, I, I know how to do a lot of things. I met law, enf law enforcement and criminal justice people from all over the country, mm. federal, st state, county. Wow. I even had some offers to travel after I retired to go somewhere else and work with them. Wow. But I didn't, my cool. wife didn't want me doing anything with guns. Or Shut you anything. down. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So right. You know, so I'm sure she must have been around. And immigration. Some of this, right? we, we had immigration work right in our in, in institution. Oh, okay. oh, really? Okay. Oh, no kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. So when you look back on it, what are, what are your thoughts now? About immigration? Yeah. No, uh, well, about your just the overall. It, like, it was a, a, you know, 20 years I left. There's a couple of people I still work with, still working there. I got 35, 30 wow. years. Wow. Wow. I couldn't do we, that. But we, it was, you know, yeah. it was an experience. Yeah. I got a pension I from it. I got medical coverage. So good yeah. for my family. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's interesting. Like, the, the I don't know if you want to speak to it, but it's, it's up to you, Bray. But, but if you wouldn't mind sharing, what'd you go, what'd you do after uh, you left record, you retired? What'd you do for a job after that? I didn't do nothing for about nine months and mm -hmm. then my wife got sick of me being at home yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know I, my son was just born and we just i was raising him but she got sick of me being at home and say what are you gonna do right i don't want to do anything i'm kind of forced back into not forced but i went back to yeah. school Get okay. that's, that's great so and i drove a school bus there it seven, is i drove a school bus for six seven years so you, were, school. School. you were probably pretty young then but when did when did you start in uh when did you get 24 so you were only okay. 44 when you got out. Yeah. So that's pretty young. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got yeah. a retirement. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a yeah, good right. thing about the Marines and military. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's hilarious that he, what, were, what age were these school kids? From little to uh, uh, teenagers. Do you find it funny he spent 20 years in records and he went to drive his kids on the bus? <laughs> <laughs> who, who was worse, those kids on the bus or those records? Nah. Yeah, the kids on the bus. Yeah, about, <laughs> it's, you know, it's all about the same mentality. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. It. Wow, look at that. That's yeah. crazy. So, uh, I also, it's real I quick, I'm sorry, Rod. Yeah, oh, no, absolutely. I don't know if we, we even said this yet or not but uh just out of curiosity just for clarification uh Rikers so now is that that's a is that a state-run institution no, it's, it's, it's not a city, federal. It's, city, it's, city, it's, city it's a city run. right yeah. okay because yeah. i know we were talking about like we, we had mentioned to ray earlier that we were talking about jeffrey epstein and i think he was held in a federal institution in federal yeah right, right. Okay, he was in so. brooklyn yeah and the okay. other guy who was the guy who uh, the big uh ponzi schemer i, I believe that was yeah he was he was in a he was in a, uh the the one in brooklyn too the federal. oh, oh he okay yeah, i gotta gotcha. tell you those people really they ruin people's lives the guy yeah. who shot yeah. in general the, the, guy, the white the, collar criminals yeah. they ruined multiple people's lives that was one person's life yeah did you guys have anything before we wrap with uh ray yeah i actually do i questions um uh, some of the famous people I've noticed. One of them was Mark David Chapman. I was just wondering if he had. He was probably in the men, the mental part of the prison too. I would. Imagine, yeah, right? he 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 was not in a regular housing area. He was right. Because they were, not not only was it just so, if it was all over the newspapers, they were put getting put in special housing okay, areas. Okay, right. And people like fair that, enough. You would get they would hurt you in jail. Whether wow. the staff or the inmates uh, inmates would hurt you. Wow, right. it's yeah. unbelievable. Did anybody get any special treatments and stuff? Does that happen? Mm. It does. Mm. Every now right. and then. But there right, must we'll be a lot. It, we'll yeah, we'll that. take it at that. We'll leave it at that. There might be, uh, there must be like a change. When, when someone famous comes into the prison, it must be some sort of, is it activity different? Or is it like, does the prison uh, uh, atmosphere change? Or different? No, not atmosphere? really. No one atmosphere change like in when you had like shootings. By NYPD or whatever, oh. law enforcement inside the uh, okay. in, in the city. Yeah, you know if it was a good shooting or it was a bad shooting. If they were inmates started going crazy, it was a bad shooting. If it was if nothing happened, that means oh, that punk. He they knew, they it. knew he who he was. Yeah, he was going to get it anyway, so sure. they knew it. Right? Sure. Wow, okay. that's really crazy. Oh, my God. Now it's, I'm, a, it's an interesting gauge to like measure that. Yeah, it is. Right? It's, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. It's like some kind of self-rule, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they had, you know, it's they had their... Own rules, own code. Right. and the ones that were older, they definitely were. You know, they were stand up. Most of them were stand up guys. You know, right, a lot of people locked up. You know, say, oh, the person went to uh, jail for murder. Right. Well, murder is a funny thing. You know, why did he? 
<laughs> why did he kill you know, the other person? Why did he kill the other person? Right. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. Right. Right. That's a good point too. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So you're saying he's not. I'm not mad at you. I killed that guy, but I'm not mad at you. Yeah. Right. I killed that guy. Yeah, yeah, right, like, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's interesting. It's not. It's Let's like say it's like a, a, a like crime of passion, right? And yeah. like, no, he pissed me off. He whatever. I'm, I'm, you know, not not. It's not me, but you know, that's yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. I guess the only the only thing I was, I was like I, I had wanted to ask you were you you carried you know you we weren't allowed to carry, carry nothing. Didn't carry anything. We had right? off duty no, right? guns we carried in the street. You did. But we okay. Didn't, we didn't carry anything. No, they had batons. And when I first started, they had batons in the housing areas. They took those away oh wow know? really but they used to the only thing they had was the batons mm -hmm. and the gear but then they started getting added like they started using pepper letting us carry okay. pepper spray mm -hmm. and they were using the shock shields oh okay great. so did they did implement some things to try to keep up oh with the sure times? They, they they definitely you know tried to uh make it more manageable mm. you know mm. if you have tools to stop whatever is occurring it, it's better than a whole bunch of people getting hurt. Including, yeah. Including the inmate. You for know, sure, for sure. Hurt. No, I know you're right. Absolutely. Well, because most of right? yeah. you know, yeah. violence and oh, you, most of the time ended up people going to hospitals. Nobody's yeah, waiting. Inmates right. and, or, you know, staff. So. Wow. So I know, uh, Ray, when I see you at work now, sometimes we'll bust shots and be like, oh, Ray's institutionalized. And to some I degree, am, yes. We're all to this, some really. degree, I'm being sincere. Like, yeah. do you feel like it's left a lasting impression or it's changed mm -hmm. who you are in some kind of finite way? Yeah, it definitely changes you. Right, Absolutely. it leaves an imprint on yep. you, kind of, right? Wow. I still, like, if I hear a loud buzz, you, you get up off the chair because that means right. we've got to go fight. Right, wow. right. I still here wow. do that. No, I can It's 20 years of it. Yeah. I can see how that could be. I just have uh, two things I wanted to ask you. One is I, I was just curious because I saw a, a special on Netflix, and it doesn't list them here, but I was wondering, the Central Park Five, you remember when that happened? Mm -hmm. Were mm -hmm. they at Rikers? Yes. They were at Rikers. Yes. Do you remember that at Rikers then? Or do you remember I remember them being there, but that's another thing. That, that was uh, uh, in the headlines. Year. They were in a different institution. Sure. They, were, they were adolescents. And right. Oh, wow. We had adolescents in jail, but they weren't housed there. That was special special housing. That gotcha. was an unfortunate thing that happened. Yeah, that yeah, was. Absolutely. It really was. Yeah, well, there was a lot um, of pressures to make arrests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Pretty insane. Um, and the other yeah. thing I wanted to ask you is that it, in, in the news just recently is the is – the, uh, the city council voted to close Rikers Island. How do you feel yeah. about uh, that? I don't think the the boroughs are going to go for it. The people and the thing they're going to pro that's going to be a big problem. Yeah. So okay. according to De Blasio uh, on that subject matter, he was saying that it's it's decreased violence over whatever amount five six years now steadily. According to him, the in only that reason area. the violence so decreases because they, like they, they don't can, have as many right because they're in there. There. Yeah. Oh right, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Which is like <laughs> I know. I'm like I don't, don't tell you. Stuff, yeah. so. Joe, you have anything else for him? No, that's pretty much it, right? You know, thank you for coming on. That's yeah, great. we really it's appreciate really it, man. Appreciate no it, and you are our first ever guest on the Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank yes. you very yes. much. Appreciate all right, man. That. We appreciate right. it. We'll be back Tell with our routine uh, stuff on our regular segments for Loosely Related Podcast. All Bye. All right. Thank you. Ray. Take Bye -bye. care, everyone. Hey, thanks, Ray, for that. We appreciate you coming on board. I just wanted to shout out yesterday I went to a place – a nice place here in the Hudson Valley. Um, I always forget about it. And I don't know why I do because I love going there. And it's getting every time I go there, it just gets nicer and nicer every time. The place is called Pamela's on the Hudson. And it's a great place. Uh, the address is, uh, let's see. Don't poke yourself. Yeah. I'm not going to poke yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, um, the address is One Park Place, Newburgh, New York. Okay. Um, and it's down underneath the bridge, but right on the Hudson. And yeah. you know, the place they fixed it up. They have a great bar, great setup down there. They have a happy hour on Saturday. My wife and I went from 5 to 7. They give you uh, two spreads of food. They give you a dollar off all drinks. Um and yeah, that view it's is just, gorgeous and the, too, the right? view yeah. is great. It, check them out at Pamela's on the Hudson dot com. Uh, I would I have pictures um, that probably won't even do these justice, but the pictures on the website are also pretty much describe what the place looks like. Um, check out the link, and uh, you know when you get a chance, if you're in the area, check out Pamela's. It's a great yeah, place. Come hang out with us there. All yeah. Right. Welcome back, everybody. So that was pretty intense. We started off with something new, right? Did yes. You guys have a good time, dude. What? Well, oh, we're we're a man down. We're a man. We down. are. Man, uh, there you down. are. There we go. You're I thought good. we lost you. I'm we lost back him for a second. And uh, he was Brian's still reeling back. from that interview. I, I, I every once in a while I like to like see if I can hear myself without any audio stuff uh, attached to my body. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I, you I do do that, do that every now and then. Oh, uh, hello. Can I, I can't hey, hear. I'm not. I'm not. I don't hear myself. I don't. 
Pretty, I don't see myself. Yeah, there you go. So, so dude, uh, I don't know, dude. as you probably know, we just had an awesome interview with our first uh, ever guest, uh, Ray. He was a, a corrections officer for 20 years at Rikers. I think we all really enjoyed that. Dude. Right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That I was mean, amazing. I'm so happy we finally had our first interview with, and we have more to come, too. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited yeah. for some of the guests that you two are going to be having on in the near future. Yeah. I'm yeah, excited man. to have our producer, Brian, back on. What's up, Brian? Brian. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Welcome back, These ropes Brian. are freaking tight. <laughs> yeah. We'll loosen them up a little bit later on. Okay? Very, All right. Let's, very let's, little. let's not. Uh, well, listen, we're not, not taking off. The promise. We're not taking <laughs> off the uh, leg. Uh, leg chains, though. That's not okay. happening. All right. Right. Well, I don't need to edit with my feet. But get get if I can exactly. reach the keyboard, I feel like a T-Rex back exactly. here. Yeah. You remember that, uh, what was that, uh, Ocean's 8, when they had that little flexible Asian dude? Oh, he, like, yeah. He squeezes into like a thimble. That was like Brian getting That's out like of these That's like Brian ropes. getting yeah. out of these things, yeah. 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 yeah, so we found Brian in a gas station bathroom in North Carolina. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was pretty, you know, I swear, that's where I knew you'd be because I just figured that's like that's where Brian is, where most people it, usually it turns go. Out that's where they hang out when they go low key. <laughs> it turns out that For Ray, the com- the uh, corrections officer guy, was giving him tips on how to escape <laughs> from places. And not only and that, I didn't was. think about find my friends. Oh, I didn't. Find I didn't. My, yeah, you, you didn't shut it off, right? No, I didn't. You didn't. That's I'm part of the reason that we see. And Rob made fun of me for stalking people stalking on find everybody. my friends. It, it came in handy. Those oh. are one of those life hack things off, that man. that pays off. It's oh, a, a life hack. <laughs> look at that. that look off. at that. Look at that segue. He's there we go. We're right, segueing guys. into the next <laughs> we're, segment. We're full on into our silliness. We're all back. The band's back together. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, we're gonna go back to our loosely related uh, <laughs> podcast antics. We're gonna chat it up a little bit. I think uh, Joey. And the rest of us are going to talk a little bit about life hacks, Joey? Yeah, so I was thinking, because, like, all right, so we we had the, the other day, me and Rob were talking, and it was just so random. We were talking about pizza and, like, about how, like, the <laughs> best pizza around here. And then he was like, yeah, you know, I love pizza, but, like, it's so annoying when you want to eat it the next day. You got to put it in the oven. It takes forever right. if you want to eat it good. And I said, yeah, well, isn't there, like, a life hack where, like, if you take a piece of pizza that was, like, in the fridge or whatever, you put it in the microwave, and you put, like, a cup of water, like a I'm plastic the one, cup of I'm water I'm the one who told it. you guys. You, yeah. I, I told Joe you guys that. that. Yeah. And so, I, ha, Rob, it, Rob exactly? called so me tell up. Tell us how you do that. Rob called me up one day, and he says that doesn't work. I, I just did your little trick with the water in the microwave next to the bread thing, and it doesn't work. It works for like ten seconds, and That's then it's hard it as like. a rock. Right. So, so how's it supposed to work? Everybody knows that when you put bread or bread Pizza products in a, in, in, a, in a microwave, it becomes very soggy when you first take it out, and within like fifteen seconds, once it cools, it becomes. Hard. Shingles. Yeah. It's like you can shingle your house with whatever bread product <laughs> that you just yeah. pulled out. Which we do. But now the trick right. is when you when you're microwaving something, you can't put a full glass of water in the microwave with the piece because it's not going to heat up. The water's not going to condense into the microwave air okay. and give it moisture. So you put a small amount of water in there oh. next to it, like uh, just a Maybe small a layer. Dude, like I filled mine up of to water. the top. No, no, no. That's why it didn't <laughs> work because it's too. not doing anything. What? Because the point is, you want to boil Take that little bit of water. Air. It's going to put because if you ever notice, it's blowing air yeah. around inside yeah. the microwave too. It pulls the moisture, isn't it? Well, um, it, it, what happens, micro, the way microwaves work, if you don't you know, and you can check excited. me on this, Brian, if you want, oh, but here we go. microwaves <laughs> work <laughs> by, by uh, accelerating the water the molecules in the, the microwave the, gods it is. give grant power to microwaves. And yes, and then they, they have power <laughs> over all food. <laughs> But no, it, it's, it accelerates the vibrations between the molecule, yeah, water molecules in yeah, the food, and that's those right, water dude, molecules. What happens it's, is it's too smart. the water molecules yeah, smart are they're basically evaporating because they're getting heated up, and they just yeah. evaporate. So what you right. want to do is you want to you want to balance that out by keeping more water in the air, yeah. and it won't dry But out. only a little bit. Just a little bit so that water boils. What the And then that boiling yeah. water will uh, help your food from not becoming, you know, yeah. Bricks. Basically. So, so is this correct, Brian? What do we got, Brian? Uh, okay, so it says uh, they're they're quick and efficient because they channel heat energy directly to mo- molecules, the tiny particles inside food or water. Okay. And it says microwaves heat food like the sun heats your face by radiation. Right. Um, so that sounds healthy. That sounds good. Like I've been doing all my my life. Well, that's pretty much. Right. I just I go outside, just hold so, up my eggs at the sun, and I say, "Come on, right. man." Yep. I think I'm we get the uh, work. I think People yeah. do that. That's though. another life. That's one of the life yeah. hacks. <laughs> yeah, I think exactly. We give, uh, I think we give him the point. It sounded like it was mostly correct. With yeah. That. All right. Uh, so yeah. So you right. go. So I mean, now next time, begrudgingly, and I want you guys to try that at home and see if it works for you. Next time, use microwave. But next time, try it and let me know if it works. It works for me when I do it. Yeah. All right. And I even said it to you when you. Told me, I 
realized that it, it worked for me. Yeah, you did tell me. Yeah, you but did you say that, that about a lot of things. You yeah, did. I it do. Worked for me. But <laughs> I pretty good. I'm the freaking. They call me MacGyver. They, they don't call me MacGyver yeah. for nothing. Right. You know what I guess. I'm there was a period of time where this guy was operating or closing or locking doors all with the same butter knife for like. A, oh my god! Like two years. Oh, you would just, use the same butter knife. He just spoiled one of my my life hacks. Oh, I'm sorry. Your butter knife. No, I was going to put the butter knife. It's fine. You can talk about it. You can talk about it. There was a time where I came over and I was like. What's going on with the washing uh, machine? Not the washing machine. I'm an idiot. It the was dishwasher. Dishwasher. I was trying to open it, and you're like, <laughs> you're like, you obviously, he doesn't like look like this is strange at all. This is just every day for Joe. Yeah. For me, yeah. He takes out this like little butter knife, and then he like jostles it into the top of the, the dishwasher, and it pops right open. Yeah. Then like well, sometime later, we I, have I'm a new dishwasher the bathroom. Then, so yeah. This was some anymore. time ago. Yeah. I sometime later I see like the thermostat is somehow on yeah. the wall. I don't know how he did this, but he had like the butter knife was shimmed behind the behind the, behind the thermostat. What was that for? Yeah, what the hell was that? I, there's, I lived my whole life again. I that was know. again that was another. I have a new thermostat too, so I don't do that anymore. But back then when I had this old thermostat with the house, there's a mercury thing that when the, that reads the heat and it, it balances. So if it's not if it's off balance, it doesn't work correctly. Right. So it was instead of me figuring out how to adjust that, I just one day I jammed the, the the steak knife in there. It has a little bit of a wedge to it, and I jam it in there so it balances that leaning on the wall, and just, it, and it engages and it works. So I just Ridiculous. left the knife stuck into like, the side. There's of like there is a, like a legitimate science behind there your was, madness. Yeah. Like that's, there was that's no, it actually works. That's some, pretty cool, yeah, man. There's, there's always science there. behind there's an my actual, madness. Like, well, there's a method there. Yeah, there's like that. legitimate. Yeah. yeah. Now I just have but, a, a regular so then, one that works, and it's all. It's not. But, uh, but it doesn't yeah. have mercury. Uh, the mercury thing in it anymore. It's all electronic now. <laughs> well, I would think yeah, you should stop to freaking yeah. messing around with mercury, probably. No, it's 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 different. Not what you think, but yeah, it works. So so then that same that same like small period of time i want to go down into his i think into or no to open up your uh your door to get into your snacky stuff oh, oh yeah no. and that wasn't working so then he just pulls the butter knife out from behind the thermostat and uses it to open that door i I'm use like, it to unlock the, the door to shimmy the freaking door it's like yeah. a, i had to use a steak a knife for that tool one. for everything yeah. i had Literally. to use a steak knife for it was that a steak. one yeah was, I, you couldn't use a butter knife but, i mean like you could but the, it was so thin between the door and the door jam right. that you had to get something pointier and just kind of get the little thing that locks the door yeah it still happens if i don't it want does still if happen. i want to that's I want, one thing that, that we did not fix yeah so now <laughs> well i don't want to fix that and the reason why i don't is because um when i want to hide my snacks and i don't want people to eat them yeah. i i throw them in the closet and i slam that door yeah. and then nobody can it's open it except me yeah so. exactly it's like a little <laughs> thing but yeah so rob to answer your original question so we were going through all this stuff and i was thinking i was like you know what like there's so many life hacks that like I have used a few like since then and whatever. But I started thinking about like some of them, you know, work. But I feel like the vast majority of these life hacks, yeah, I know. they they don't hack anything. They just if anything, they they just freaking make your life even more difficult because you're right. wasting time trying to get these things to Absolutely. work and they don't work. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder how they even come up with them. They're so arduous. It's like 16 steps and like when does this problem even ever arise? Yeah. It's like this come if you ever in a hotel and you want to get out alone. If you have two friends that work for the fire department <laughs> and acts in a 28 foot ladder, we know a way to get you out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. If you're ever on an airplane, you know how to fly an airplane. And you ever want to just you know, fly to a different place, walk them to the pilot, knock on the door, and knock them over the head, and right. fly to a different place. So <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go. I'll I'll tell you guys what. Well, let's go through a few of them, I guess. Yeah. So you have you a tell me list. have you used them before? Does yeah. this sound like something that would be good for That's you? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. All right. This is this comes from BuzzFeed. All right. Oh, so cool. Okay. I got to say, this one has to do with avocados and the way they ripen. If anyone loves avocados, I do. Do you guys like avocados or guacamole? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't Joey, like, Joey doesn't. I don't like, like guacamole. Uh, no, I yeah. Guac, man. I don't. I love salsa, but not guacamole. Okay. Yeah. I love salsa, too. That's good. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you did like guacamole and you want to get the, that fresh guac going to get the avocados, but anybody who's ever gotten them knows they're ripe for about .34 seconds and a very like in the middle of a Tuesday. So you can have them for eight minutes and you can miss your – Miss it, and it goes right to crap. It's just like really? it's only right for like a hot minute. I don't know what it is. What? The but hell? so you okay. want to get them kind of hard, but they're so easy to forget about because yeah. like a lot of times you leave them out or whatever. So this life hack says sticking an avocado into a beer cozy, which I know we must have around here since we're celebrating beer often. Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. quite a few, quite yeah. a few. Yeah. Okay. So this one, at least you do have the beer cozy around. Okay. It can help it right ripen it faster. It doesn't say how fast, but it says you put it in there and it shows you a picture of one ripening up apparently instantly. So. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. You think you would use that? Put your 
Well, you don't like avocado. Do you like avocado? No, you, no, you, you like avocado. Like avocado. Yeah. So you, would you use your beer cozy and try it out for us? You want, you sure. Want to take if there's no task? beer in there, which, let's be honest, there's never not a beer in there. Yeah, so. no, we can right, try so that. But make sure you empty that beer cozy first before yeah. you put the avocado Yeah, in. exactly. Okay. All, All right. right. Here, we have those, too. That's kind of cool. Okay. All right. All right. What, what else, else we got, we got, Robert? Okay, so if you're in a hotel room where the curtains don't close all the way, check the closet for a coat hanger with clips. So this would be the kind of coat hanger uh, that you would have pants. Like you would clip your pants oh, okay. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you put the sport jacket over it. Mm-hmm. It's the broader looking thing. It looks ridiculous. What is it again? Yeah. So you would take this a lot. First of all, if, you, if you're not going to those high-end hotels like we're not, yeah. you probably got the <laughs> hangers where they have the circle around. You can't even take it out of the closet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. saying you could. If you don't mind having a giant hanger off your curtains, you know, sometimes they don't come together quite right. Yeah, yeah. sure. You take the clips that would be used for the pant for the the hanger, and right. you use that hanger for the two clips, and you close the curtains together. Huh. Really? Oh, that's okay, interesting. I, mean, I would use that. Right. You would use that? Yeah, I would use that, there, absolutely. There does always there's seem so to many, be... Every hotel, if you go to a cheap hotel or a cheap motel, None of the curtains. Only your yeah. It's always a, it, it's, that ray of sunlight. It, it's always something. Yeah. yeah. So if you want it darker in the room, then that, yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. And and somehow that ray of sunlight is always pointed directly where your, your head face. is going to be <laughs> positioned on yeah. that oh, pillow. Yeah, exactly. And no matter how you move, it's and like the, oh, sun the sun comes, just happened the sun, to move. It's like it's like a ancient like Mayan like ritual uh, thing. Like whoever <laughs> built dial, it was like, like ancestors <laughs> of the Mayans. Yeah. <laughs> and they and when the sun rises, it actually rises right through that seam that's yeah. open in that in that blind. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a. While so, you're sleeping, uh, you got no matter where you are in bed, it no matter where you are, that's yeah. that's the whole point. You could no matter you you could switch positions. It is and still will still follow. Be there. It's still fine. <laughs> and you give that you give that a thumbs up, then Joe. You do that thumbs up. Damn, yeah, that's liking them all so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would try it. Like I, I like said, it. we go on Good like ideas. we go on our, our our little uh you know Motel Six vacations every now and then where you you ten people to a room and yeah I'll, I'll use that for sure. Well, when you have sure. seventeen Bangladeshi children and a bunch yeah, of porcupines, you know, you know, you got to whatever you. They don't like to keep the lights on. Got to cut costs somewhere. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see what else we got here. Some of them are so silly, I just can't. Just can't even. <laughs> you can't even dignify I it. I don't even know what is I got a ton here. I found online. You got a few, Brian? Let, yeah, let, me, so, get, okay. let me get one, Brian. All right. What do you got over there? So, <laughs> gosh. Batteries dead in your smoke alarm? Just use a popcorn as a smoke alarm. When you hear crackling, grab your popcorn and get the hell out. Are you serious? <laughs> That's hilarious. Wait, really? Oh, wow. That was, <laughs> you you got to unpack think, that for me. I again. think if you're hearing the, the popcorn crackling already, I think <laughs> you're you're, it's too late to get <laughs> it's out. It's probably too late. How it's hot does it to have to out. be to pop but a, a popcorn But kernel? at least you'll die with... Uh, the not snack. hungry or whatever with the snack. I guess so. that's true. By your snack death. If you what like it unbuttered and unsalted. That must have been developed in like a, a SUNY college dormitory. Yeah. Because I can't tell you how many times there's a fire in some dorm. It's always caused by some idiot's popcorn. Yeah, popcorn, <laughs> like a microwave or toaster oven that, that, yeah. that, that like you're not supposed to have on campus. Like, Brian, you you were on a, an on-campus student. Were you allowed to ever have like toaster ovens or microwave or anything like that? <laughs> no. no, right? <laughs> I see this That's other so one funny. you popped up here. What's this tell? What is this f- finger bagel life act? Oh, okay. That? So it is <laughs> essentially, uh, here, let me go back to it. When cutting bagels in half, put your finger through the hole in the middle to keep it steady. Yeah. So, yep. <laughs> yep. So cut your finger off. There you That's go. That's not a good there one. There you go. The photo is hilarious. I should, <laughs> is it really? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's literally a, it, this is a big-ass knife, and the guy's yeah. got his finger, and he's cutting through the bagel with the finger right in front of the knife. Yeah, you're going to have to pop, prop that mm. up on the on the video because yeah. that is freaking hilarious. I could, uh, I could see Joe using this one. This one's like, so you're at a movie theater and you don't, your butter's not getting mixed from that oily goop that, you know, the little machine, it's yeah. all disgusting. Yep. So you bring a Somebody's straw snot. with you. Exactly. Yeah. You bring a straw, you plug the straw into the, the the orifice or the opening, and then you can use that to disperse it evenly through your popcorn. That's mm, a good idea, though. I like that. That's kind of good. Huh. You got some good ones. That's wow, I like dude, those. Dude, that's like an Ollie's. Let me, uh, let me, let me well, tell you. Well, you've always loved life hacking. I do though. if they you, work. You if, they're, if, they're, if they're simple things that actually are effective, they're cool. I think yeah. they're really cool things. Um, some of my uh, uh, life hacks have been. This is Joe's life hacks, or this is just your some, ones some that of, you've, you've, you've used? Yeah, some yeah, of he's my, taking credit for these? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, well, ones that I used them, I'm not sure. They might be Did you popularize them? Well, um, some of the this is not mine. The toothpaste hack is that oh, yeah. you always hear about the toothpaste hack, right? I mean, where you can wipe it on your phone and you could get the scratches out of your phone, right. or you could wipe it on your headlights. 
Oh and, yeah, and, car and headlights, move, right? And make them look like they're brand new again. Mm-hmm. It like shines them up, or it shines them up for a little bit. I mean, I've tried it on old headlights. I it works like I said for a little while, and then it goes away. So really? I, yeah, it oh, doesn't okay. stay. It, it's not like as soon as you get your first rain and that residue from the toothpaste. Oh it, it's yeah, sure, right back to sure, what sure, it was, sure. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, I have used it on my my watch, the glass face of a watch. You know, oh. you wear. I tend to actually wear wrist in now. Because, okay, so I don't scratch them. Yeah, but if you have the you know a glass watch and you scrape up against what's going on over there, you scrape it up against. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Guys. I just found a life hack. Oh if, really? Uh, <laughs> so you scrape the watch up against a wall or a paint, uh, it will toothpaste will take it off. It okay. works really good. Huh. So. Here's one of my favorite hacks that I I can tell you about. It it's actually is going to one of your favorite cracks. He said. Well, cracks. cracks. Well, no, that's another What's segment. It's oh, another okay, story okay. for another day. I have favorite crack. Oh, um, <laughs> one of my favorite <laughs> hacks is um, actually uh, helped out both of my sons on uh, different occasions. Well, actually, my daughter and my son on two different occasions, which is almost goes into two categories here because we're going to talk about uh, stories. No good. Oh yeah, fun yeah. Stories, story, that right? I yeah, yeah. Think of, but it segues into that because I used hacks on these. Okay. And one was a project for my daughter. <laughs> she had to do a science project, <laughs> and we were coming up with ideas for science projects. And I read up online, or I don't know if it was Google or the book, and it said you string a bunch of potatoes together. Yeah, and, so I remember. And yes. you put wires in, and you know, copper wire, and then you can hook it to a light, and a, it will a, light a the, light bulb. It will light the light bulb. Right. But I did that. I had like seven. Right. So it could generate to, energy. Yeah. Well, right. so I did that. Yeah. And I sure had seven did. or eight potatoes on the thing, and I put the potatoes on there, and I ran the wires, and I hooked it to this little light that I had. And didn't work. Didn't work. So I was like, okay, I know what to do. <laughs> I got some double A. Tri- I got some double A batteries. Yeah. I cut out the bottoms underneath the potatoes, <laughs> and I put the batteries in the potatoes, and I ran the wires to the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> inside of the potatoes. Inside of the this. potatoes. And then I put the potatoes back on the board and glued them down. So yeah. the, the, it lit what, perfectly. What grade and was this for? This I don't remember. Seventh fourth, gr- no, no. Seventh, no, no, like a seventh grade she came in like, I remember I was there for a prize, but I can't remember. You send your kid in with this. Yeah. Oh, I did. It was, it was, and she won. I think she, she got, third, I think third, like, uh, third prize she third got. Prize she and got people in were freaking fair. out. They were like, oh my God, I couldn't believe this works so well. This is, this is incredible. Yeah, it was yeah. hilarious. That was Nobody thought it was project. weird that the battery's supposed to weekly light at night light. This one's running half a It was yeah. running <laughs> a light bulb, like a 60 wow, watt light bulb. I don't know what it was. I remember it cut it. I start my car off of that. You could charge your phone yeah you can do that i yep. actually installed uh lights in the back and i used the potatoes to <laughs> do it so. <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> that's so funny that's great so oh my so gosh that's, yeah that was like one of my favorite life hacks so um how about this one this guy's wearing uh so he turns his hoodie uh, like i'm wearing now yeah you turn it around and so the hood of it is facing like to your mouth and then you use it to put your popcorn in oh right. shit that's like that a work. solid kangaroo pouch yeah kangaroo pretty, pouch pretty much kangaroo that's pouch. that's kind of right. cool that, I like that. That could work. That's I'm good. That's kind of gross. My my, 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 my my clothes is all gross. And then if I got, if I have my hoodie up in my hair, well, at least but I at mean, least at this point the back now would match the front because the front I part spill of it. all the crap on <laughs> right. the front of my. Yeah, now too. I would have all the when you're a messy. On the back I guess too. if you're a messy eater, it works, right? W- Brian, w- uh, that was yours one. I know you had one, right? Yeah, yeah. W- w- uh, a life hack, right? Didn't you have one? You were saying a good one that or I something used? like that. Yeah, no, d- like that that you pulled up or whatever. I oh, wasn't sure that if I was laughing that. about before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I all, just put it, all of a sudden I see Brian cracking up over right. there, and I'm like, all right, he's got to go. When I got to hear Here this, go. <laughs> so it, it was. It says it was number twenty two on this list. Don't okay. be afraid to use public bathrooms ever again. Okay. It says bathroom tip going number two. Discreetly cover up your poop sounds by continually <laughs> shrieking at the top of your lungs. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh <my goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> I would much rather do that than have people. Uh, that makes me so. I hate. Oh my gosh. Don't you I, hate? Yes. There's I know ten you're open. Stalls, yeah. you take one and, and like you're all the way on the corner, and the person comes in, it's like, Yeah, I'll just sit right next to you in a completely empty bathroom where there's no sounds, and you just had yeah. morning coffee, and you're not really feeling too good. Maybe you had a ham, egg, and cheese. And then, <laughs> do you yep. ever go into the same bathrooms and find that somebody's like, just they don't care whoever is in there, they're just grinding one out? They're like, <laughs> Yeah. I get so shy, I don't even want to hear my pee yeah. hit the water. Yeah, literally. I'm like, it's someone else in here. Literally. I'm like so judging myself. It's the so weirdest hard. thing. They'll man. get yeah. some in there. They're stinking the place up. They're just like, I own this. They're like, yep. Oh, that reminds me of a life hack. Yeah. That, that, oh, the, the oh, good life hack for All the right. poop. How does that remind you of a life hack? Poopery. It's, oh, poopery. Well, that's not really a yes. life hack. That's no, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Oh. The, and people, oh, I'm sure everyone knows this, but if it if you take a crap in the bathroom and it stinks to high heaven, you uh-huh. just take a couple of matches, you light the matches and blow them out, and the sulfur from the 
soda. Oh, yeah, yeah, The soda yeah, from yeah. the yeah. matches There is nothing the better that, that so. eliminates any bad smell. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, it always clearly yeah. eliminates it. I don't know if anymore. you'll be able to do that in a mall bathroom these days, just yeah. letting your matches. Yeah, right. If you even have matches. Light a match guy. Yeah. yeah. Here's yeah. a life hack that's not even a hack. Right. This person's wearing... Chopping onions, so she wears ski goggles, so you get no tears. Oh, is that yeah. really a hack? No, oh, no, no. But, but there is one. But there though, is right? one. If what you, if you're blind and then you don't also <laughs> have tears? You still have tears. I guess it's what caused your blindness. This I one was actually maybe, on. Right? Tears, um, what's that show where they test all the things? Oh, Dude, there's I, a uh, hacks, uh, hack, hack or whack. I think that's it's uh, uh, Breaking Bad. Is that Breaking one? Bad? Yeah. Breaking, yeah. Bad. Yeah. Breaking Bad. So <laughs> they did a they did a, uh, a, a test on it to. Uh, Use these three things, top three things about when you're when you're cutting onions. If you chew gum, chew gum. That's the one I was gonna say. Yeah, chew gum. And if you that, chew gum that while works. you're while you're cutting oh, slice the onions, that's the one. You know, I give thumbs cry. up. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, does, yeah. it works. I just did it, it like recently. Works. Yeah, oh, it really? works. Yeah. No, it actually, it actually, it, it actually works. Works. Oh, what, do I don't, you remember I don't how it works? By the way, or? Um, the, there's something about the fumes from the gum. Try to pull that up, maybe whatever. If gum works, chewing gum while while slicing onions works. I can't remember. They did explain it, but you can see it on. Uh, I think it's on True TV. Scientifically speaking, when you chew, hack or whack or something like you that, you shut your tear ducts show, off. So it stops you from crying. You yeah. So yeah, basically, it stops the uh, fumes from the onion somehow from getting to what your 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 tear ducts or whatever it is. It has something to do with your mouth being opened or something. But well, anyway. your mouth is often oh. open. Yeah, but yeah. Hey, Brian's looking. Maybe that that's up. why it wanna... doesn't bother me as much. All right, so while Brian's looking this up, here is a life hack I genuinely use and I find it awesome. I don't know where I first read it. Or saw it. I think I heard it on someone else's podcast. But in any case, you uh, you know when you're feeling like crap, the only place I ever want to be is in like a hot shower. Like when you have a bad yeah. head cold, you, st- you know what I mean? I just want yeah. the hot water to beat on me and then lay back in bed. Yeah, sure. Hell yeah. You mix like a, a liter or so of water uh, with uh, two tablespoons of Vicks Vapor Rub. Ooh. I actually throw a little baking soda in my two to make it a little thicker, but this one doesn't say that. Okay. Then you freeze them overnight in you know regular like uh, uh, ice cube tray. Hopefully no one uses that. Yeah. Then you place those in your shower and the hot water melts it and you get all the Vicks Vapor Rub. Oh, wow. Oh, that's kind of awesome. Wow, really? I really like it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that works Holy really crap. well. So I would say if you, if you haven't done that and you got some Vicks Vapor Rub, you're not feeling good, Go ahead and mix that up with a, a, a liter of water. Put a little baking soda in there to solidify it a little bit. Freeze it and then put it in your hot shower. No Ooh, shit. It's okay. awesome. This chewing gum thing is crazy. It, is it really? Listen okay. to this. Yeah. When oh, we cry, yeah. the, when we cry, the tears do not actually come from our eyes. They come from small glands located next to the eye itself. I actually don't know if this is true. Right, okay, this is what someone is saying. Okay, yeah. um, sounds right. Located in the corners of our eyes, yeah. it sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the right in your, right in your. lacrimal ducts. The yeah. lacrimal glands produce tears when irrigated. When, ir- when irritated, onions contain an unstable chemical known as a synpropathenol. S oxide. When an onion is mm-hmm. cut, the chemical is released into the air. It irritates the glands, causing them to excrete tears. Okay. Chewing gum while cutting onions prevents tears by forcing you to breathe through your mouth. This disperses the irritant so that a significantly smaller amount reaches those glands, preventing them from being irritated enough to release tears. So Holy I told you. crap. I nailed it again. That's Dude. the second thing I nailed. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you really gave us all these, that. Did no, you? you didn't give us all that. I but, said but you about the right. mouth being open. Oh, you did oh, say okay. you, you did oh, yeah, 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 mouth being yeah, yeah, open. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Nice, nice. Wow. Yeah. You did say that. You're like, if you're not listening to us today, you are not learning. Brian's back, so my brain's working again. Backup brain. Backup brain is Backup brain for the win. This might be the... That's why I have him chained down in three different places. Yeah, right. not leaving me again. Not leaving you again. This might I be the, the most informative episode we've ever done of our show ever. Here's yeah. a really Thanks good one. Here's and the, Ray. This one is <laughs> and, and Ray. Ray. Yes, definitely. This is uh, this is probably the best life hack I ever saw. If you're in your car and you're bored as hell for 45 or 50 minutes with a family member, you should be listening to our loosely related podcast. Mm. Uh, that'll be a great life hack. It'll, you'll bring enjoyment. You can tune everybody out. And yep. uh, where, where are they going to find us, Joey? Uh, you can find us at our website, looselyrelatedpodcast.com. You can also find us at uh, loosely underscore related on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter at LRPocast. That's P-O-A-C-A-S-T-S. You can also find us on Facebook as well as YouTube, Apple Podcasts. Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, and iHeartRadio. With all those options, there's no, there's no uh, reason you're not listening to us in that boring ass car ride. Absolutely. Of yours. And uh, if you're looking for some other type of uh, uh, entertainment, I think Joe has some stories for us he wanted to share with us today. Yeah, yeah I, I just you know stories. I was going to segue out of that f- to the story about the potatoes, but I actually had another story. I love that, that I thought potato story. Yeah, funny. I love that potato that's story. That's a funny story. You do have a lot of great in. stories. That's that's why we're doing. Yeah, story um, the, time with Joe, man. The other story is because we were talking about all the different hack things in my house and all the things that are broken and. 
um, don't work and they're, they're sort of a character of our house. It's almost hard to repair them because they're, what would we talk about if we, I fixed things? <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> exactly, right. I mean? right. So we many wouldn't stories have time to spend together. Things. Exactly. But um, <laughs> Christina, my daughter, was, uh, I don't know if she was 14, 15 years old, um, and my bathroom door for the longest time would stick. It would you would go in the bathroom and then people would get locked in and we'd have to try to we'd have to go that there happened and recently still. You had to try to lock your you know oh, twist yeah. that handle and play with I've it and get yourself out. But times. it got worse and worse over time. And Christina was here by herself one day and she went in to go to the bathroom, locked the door, and could not get out of the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And she locked herself into the bathroom. Into the bathroom. Well, let's clarify too. Was, it wasn't even that it, 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 it that it, it you couldn't unlock it. It was that there was something. The handle was the broken, handle was so broken. she didn't even lock it. it when you closed you it, it, you couldn't open. Right, you couldn't right. open the door. Right. I've been back stuck up. in there yeah. before. Yeah. Yes, and um, but it, it was bad. Maybe it was that's funny. why we should put Brian next time he tries to run away. It, it, oh, yeah, no, the door's fixed it's now. It's fixed. Unfortunately, it took me like takes me years to fix things. When I fixed them, I fixed them. Well, Brian figured that out. He almost figured it out, but luckily we were we we were there. So so what happens here is that she's in the bathroom. Luckily, she had her cell phone. I think she no no no. She didn't have any phone. That was the oh, whole she thing. didn't have a phone because we yeah all right. She didn't have a phone, and um, I, my wife was always in contact with her during the day and would call her and, and she, we, she kept calling and then my wife calls me no at work and says no one's Kath, Christina's not answering the phone at home. I don't know what's wrong. Something's going on. She usually all the time. I said all right, let me call her. I called the house and said I, you know Christina, are you there? Are you there? If you can hear my voice, um, if, I don't know if you fell down the stairs. I don't know if you're hurt. Whatever's going on, um, I'm going to call Uncle Jimmy and have Uncle Jimmy come to the house. Yeah. And to make sure everything's okay. Um, right. So, uh, in my, meanwhile, my wife's going crazy trying to call her. Christina, Christina, Christina. I yeah. She's dead. So, anyway, we call up, we call, uh, <laughs> we call up uh, Uncle That's Jimmy. He Martin happened Martin at Uncle. the time, lived across the river from us. Like Not too far. Like away. Oh, he was away in, from oh, us. Fish he was yeah, living right. in Beacon yeah, at Beacon. the time. Okay, or Beacon, Beacon, right, right. And he came across. I called him up and said, we can't get a hold of Christy. We don't know what's going on. Can you run to the house, find out, make sure everything's okay? Um, he comes to the house. With a giant lasagna. With a giant yeah. lasagna. Always, always has to bring or meatloaf. Right? <laughs> and he, but he, he comes, comes around the house, and he hears my daughter calling out. <laughs> and uh, we, you know, we had the speaker thing. That's how my daughter could hear what was going on because she could oh, hear us okay. talking to her over the voice, you know, the, the voicemail. The voicemail. The answer machine. Oh, answer oh, machine. Like, like, like a screen. It. Like, yeah. You yeah. probably like have to explain what an answer machine is to a lot yeah, of people. Lot of people. Yeah, so the yeah. answer yeah. machine, <laughs> we still have one upstairs. I can't we I'm do still have an answer machine, yeah. When a phone call comes in, the thing answers and it blares throughout the whole lot. You can hear whoever's calling you leaving a message. Leaving the message, yeah. So we're calling and we're saying, I'm calling to say, Christina, don't worry. Uncle Jimmy's coming. If you're okay, I hope you didn't break your leg. And Christina's like, hysterical because she's hearing me being like told uh, the way I am yeah. just con- and my yeah, wife so panicked Christy you know where I hope you're right you know. yeah. so Uncle Jimmy comes finds out that she's in the bathroom locked in locked in and there's it's a little window in that bathroom too it's not yeah, that big and, and, and Jimmy's not a small guy he's a big guy because <laughs> he brings that he says alright yeah. Christy I'm coming in so he, she opened the window he squeezes his way into oh, the bathroom he literally squeezed into the window and he brought tools with him and he dis. Sam disassembled the handle and they finally got out of the bathroom. Got out of the bathroom. Oh, right. But um, it's hero just, of the it's, week. It's, 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 my but, my so, daughter yeah. said she was hysterical listening to us talk to her. She was in there for like what? So that's all. So all told, she was in there for about four hours. Four oh hours. Straight. Straight. I'm not even joking. In about the four hours. Was four hours. hours, hours, four hours. It was so insane. So like that's the best part of it. I don't mean to cut off your story time, but there's so many good. Like I love that story, and I know it's so crazy because it, you know it worked out. She was fine. She was in the bathroom, luckily too. And she had water, so she was good. So she yeah, they had the sink, but she got so bored that she just laid down in the bathtub and like was just laying in the bathtub relaxing. And but it was so it funny because we used to have a really nosy neighbor. Remember that was back oh, when we had yeah. neighbor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I won't say the name, but she we had a nosy looking neighbor. through the yeah. bushes. Yeah, yeah. That's probably she but, was, uh, she was calling. But, but, out it, but it was funny because we had the she my. <laughs> we used to always make this joke. The one time that our, our neighbors, her a nosy neighbor. our neighbors, always watching. <laughs> she was the worst. She was the worst. But she was. She, we was, uh, always used to say she's always watching, always listening. So Chrissy opens the window and she's little, little, little like yelling out, "Body out the, the window!" Whatever. whatever. Who, the hell knows who, who cares? Anyway, so yeah. she's saying. Your that out like like like, like yelling no, too, too many beeps now <laughs> too many who beeps. knows who the hell she is anyway yeah, exactly. my god <laughs> but she's yelling out to my door neighbor it was just it, uh, when i think about that i laugh so like hard just her yelling <laughs> like just just her yelling out there to the to our neighbor i'm surprised she wasn't so already in the house funny. the one time when we needed our nosy neighbor to actually hear something know what's going on she wasn't there she was yeah. there she, every she was other a creeper. time though. i'll just say briefly i remember the first time that i met her i actually met her formally because i had like dog set for you a bunch of times yeah and i remember uh, i was uh still like a smoker then so i'm sitting on the deck smoking a cigarette 
just bullshitting or whatever. I feel like there's eyes on me, and I turn around like really slowly, and she is legit like over my shoulder, like, just not saying a goddamn right, word. Right, right over my shoulder. Yeah. The only thing separating me from this creepo is this thin like netting. Yeah, like, my, my, my screen. I have, porch. A, I have yeah. a screened in porch. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and she was just like, I turn around, I was startled. She's yeah. like, "Hello." <laughs> she was like, "How are you?" Like just chatting with right. me. Like, yeah. what do you need from me? Exactly. She's like. Is Joe around? I was like, no, actually, I'm I'm like watching over the house. She's like, yeah, oh, that's nice. Exactly. And then she keeps coming back. Then they're like a few minutes later, she came back, had to turn around again. She's just there again. Yeah. She doesn't even say anything. Yeah. No. Then she just starts asking like mad, like intimate questions, like asking too much personal stuff. It's crazy. I was man. like, okay, well, I'll see you later. I said uh, that dog. I was afraid to go out, like walk the dog or anything because yeah. I don't want to run into her. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's how we used to. That, that was my how dog we was the lived. same way too. My dog didn't want to go near her either. Yeah, so. no one oh did really. <laughs> But that was she a was, great story, man. She was but I else. have many more. That's just one. I'll keep. I'll try to share a different story with you every week. Story time mm-hmm. with Joe. Well, yeah, every, yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely we like. I, 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 you know, we like to try to do like repeat segments. I, I wouldn't mind every every now and then I'll, throwing that in. I'll keep you, that one. You I have probably some keep good that ones, going man. for a while. Oh know. my god! There's First so of all, you can technically stories. keep it going forever because you're as There's old as the spoken words. So you kind of have all the stories, basically. So we'll keep that going. You have actually a patent them. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so oh, yeah, that's man. story time. So, I like that little uh, that little thing, uh, that little Joe story time, because it, it just makes me reminisce so many so many funny events. Yeah, I will have funny events involving oh him gosh. and him and yeah, Brian, yeah, everybody. And Brian. Yeah, be, be oh, yeah. funny stories. So yeah, I would just want to put it out there again, though. If if uh, you know our Halloween episode's coming, we're already prepping. Uh, Brian, Joe, Joey, and I are already working on some specials for everybody. Oh, yeah. We really hope you'll enjoy them. Don't forget, if you got those creepypasta stories, if you want to shoot us a picture of your costume this year, hit us up at loosely related podcast at gmail.com with those stories. Hit us up at loosely underscore related on our Instagram. Uh, get us at, at LR Pocast, P O K, I'm sorry, P O C A S T on their mm-hmm. Twitter. So don't forget to tweet at us. Joey, you got something? Um, that's pretty much, I know, like, we we definitely really want to get the audience in here, uh, like, uh, going for the, uh, the the Halloween episode. Especially. You know, we'd love to be able to read out read off some of those uh, scary stories Absolutely. you got going on. Maybe, like, kind of maybe even occasionally, like, throw in some stuff if we've had something similar happen to us. But, uh, yeah, to everybody out there, you know, make sure that you're just, you're following us. Uh, hit that like button and subscribe to us on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and, uh, you know. I hope you guys liked our first ever guest interview with yeah, Ray. Again, so I want to say thank you to Ray again. Absolutely. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate it. For being a on yeah, board, man. With Joe, you got anything? No, that's it, I think. Um, I'm all talked out, man. Yeah. Uh, Brian? Uh, no, I just got out of the bathroom, so I need to get untied. Oh, okay. Right. I'll right. Get, I got the keys. Anyone got so, the keys? Uh, like we who's say got in the, the keys? Bronx, so yeah. I hate to flat leave you, but it's time to kick rocks. Bye. Peace out. Bye, guys. T-Rex here. I can't even reach the laptop to edit. And uh, oh wait, there we go. Okay, that'll do. That's a bucket. All right.